Those who can do. Those who can't talk about those who can. Now, can you or can you not? Or you just want to sit on the sideline and talk about other people? Or you must <laughs> My goodness. Good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Man, it is Sunday, and I hope everybody is having a great day. We'll be doing our live stream call-in show channel members. We will have the link in the community tab for you to join in to sound off about what the Cowboys are doing or not doing. You know, this morning, I um, overslept. I literally slept till 9.15 today, and I guess all the running around, all of the drama and everything else that's been going on, I guess I was just a little bit tired. My body just said, it's time for you to sit your ass down. Just sit down. Sit your ass down. And I did. And this morning when I did wake up, you know, I picked up my phone to see what's going on. You know, there was uh, Iran sent all the drones in in Israel, so I'm looking at the news and stuff, and I'm checking my email. And I have to be, uh, I, I mean, I, I am very, very fortunate. I am very, very fortunate because my man, Brian Socal, sent me, oh my goodness, the artwork for the draft, the draft logo. And it is amazing. And um, I can't thank him enough. It looks so good. I can't wait. And hopefully my wife will go ahead and get me one of those shirts and stuff made uh today because we're, we're working on getting our, our 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 gear our gear ready my, my buddy game time brian you know it's it's crazy because um tomorrow's already monday a week from monday brian will be picking up the rental car and driving to my house on tuesday and wednesday morning we'll be picking up david wiley and we'll be driving all the way to motor city where we'll pick up primetime phil at the airport and we will be literally this is this is insane now when talking about the draft here, just getting ready for the draft. Um, I was looking for cost effective because this is broke ass media, a uh, place to stay. And most of the places that had vacancies and things were, you know, 20, 30 miles out. We thought about going to an Airbnb, but we don't necessarily know the native, the, the neighborhoods. And then you got the problem of you have to get downtown for the draft. And then I thought about going to Windsor, Canada, which is literally across the river. You just go either over the Detroit River Bridge or the tunnel, but then you got to go through customs and things. And, you know, you got a bunch of guys from America coming from the draft to Canada. I don't know how all that would work out. And I finally found a hotel, and it wasn't cheap. It was it's a good chunk of change. But I was looking at the draft map of downtown Detroit basically um can't remember the park but it's like uh Marquette Park or uh it is the where the draft stage is and then at Hurt Plaza it literally is going from Ford Field all the way down to the waterfront the NFL experience is there and we are literally um on the street that's going straight to the draft our hotel is only four tenths of a mile away from the draft stage. The entrance of the actual draft is only like it's less than two tenths of a mile from us. So to actually be in the draft city, we are literally right there. And I'm as excited as can be. Um, we are going to be setting up. There's a sports bar that's like right around the corner. We'll be checking out. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have Dave, uh, Randy Seitz to go ahead and help us figure out where we need to broadcast and stuff. But we will be doing our thing from there. But what I always say, without you, it doesn't work. And I am so blessed because of so many different people. Like I said, Brian Socal, who's done the uh, the, the draft shirts and stuff like that, uh, the, the music that you hear there from uh, my man Cowboys Music um, right there, and he's done all kinds of stuff. I ended up using the wrong track when I did my Cowboys Mafia one, so I've got to download that one and maybe redo that video and things. But be that as it may, be that as it may, breaking news or something? I was about to show you something. Okay, I'm, I'm actually recording, but okay. 
What? What's that? Look at that. Almost $100. I'm about to pick it up. Okay. All right. <laughs> you need the truck? Okay. Almost $100. Where is it at? Charlottesville and then come back. Go Damn. Here. Maybe I need to do some gig work. He's got yeah, a deli- luck of chance. It's a $98. Did you already hit it or you <laughs> lost it? Okay. $98 for a basically 40 mile, 40 mile round trip delivery. Hopefully it's not heavy. Anyway, be that as it may, I have so many people that have done so much to help me. And somebody had originally done my Joe Boo's intro that I do for my live stream. And I can't remember who did that. But um, I've got so many people. My man, Megabikes, who's helped, of course, with my computer setup and everything else and getting things in here. And, of course, all of Cowboys Mafia that are out here. So there's a lot of people that help us along to get here and i appreciate them so we'll be there at the draft and i cannot wait now what's funny is the conversations that go on because you know we are literally all over the map with everything that is the dallas cowboys because you know we've heard every kind of scenario from dak prescott at 60 million a year to letting him walk to taking phone calls um from new england of possibly trading him even though he has no trade clause um, which I kind of, again, I'm, I'm just a guy who uh, sometimes broadcasts from his mama's basement and stuff. Um, I would say if I am Dak Prescott, I'm not waiving my no trade clause just to leave to go to a worse situation. Now, the thing is, for me, I have to say, and I, again, this is going to be thanking uh, somebody that I wouldn't normally thank, but... I have to thank Twiz Digga, who is an Eagles fan, okay? This is what's crazy, okay? I'm kind of meandering a little bit, maybe because I had a little extra sleep. But you have to understand a couple of things here. A lot of you guys think I'm just crazy. It's like, why is a grown man going through and got a damn voodoo doll? And why is it a cowboy Joe Boo? He's stealing from the movie Major League. It's actually because of an Eagle fan. I originally started out, my first exposure to really social media was on Facebook in a NFC East trash talking group where the moron Tom Donnelly's wife was looking for people to help talk smack in it. And I didn't know anything about it. And I was in there and started getting, you know, learning the ropes of trash talking and things like that. To make a long story short, I had been to New Orleans and I had bought a little, you know, it was like almost like a flat Stanley voodoo thing. And I had taken it to FedEx field to try and put some bad mojo on the commanders. And evidently it must've worked. And, um, one of the members in there said that the Cowboys mojo was so bad that not even Joe Boo could help him. So we, we, we owe an Eagle fan Joe Boo being here. So I made Joe Boo as a joke originally. And some incredible things have happened in my life because of it. And so then, Twiz Digga, another Eagle fan. I owe it to Eagle fans for being what what I did. You know how when you say in the mirror, I can't remember what it is, but when you say something three times in the mirror, like the boogeyman appears, or or you say Beetlejuice three times, you know, Beetlejuice appears, or Ghostbusters, they did something or other. Uh, and, and the gates of hell opened up with the river and stuff behind it. Twiz Digga may have opened up the gates of hell. You guys might remember uh, about a week and a half ago, you know? Hey, look at this. Okay, hold on. What's this here, Twiz? Before I even start, Sills, you got Mark Holmes all in his feelings yesterday. You said you don't, or he said you don't know shit about the Cowboys. And they're not trading his precious Dak. Who in the world said that I said they were trading Dak Prescott to the Patriots? That guy needs to understand. Hey, if you guys think I struggle in Super Chats... That guy needs to take an English lesson in how to read a tweet. I said they're kicking around the idea of potentially trading Dak Prescott to the New England Patriots. I didn't say they were trading him. And I can guarantee Mark Holmes, who I've never heard of, 
I've never heard of Mark Holmes. I have no idea who Mark Holmes is. Okay? That guy, he knows who I am now. And he's cool people. I had an epiphany yesterday because I was listening to him um, with uh, Dave Wanstad. And it just reminded me how great the coaching that we had. Tony Wise didn't have first round, you know, picks on the offensive line. He took Mark Tune, who was a defensive tackle, and made him an offensive tackle. Okay. They took Swignowski, who was a, a guard, and made him a center. They took um Nate Newton, who was a fat ass that Washington said, you know, we don't want him. And he went to the USFL and the Cowboys made him one of the best, you know, offensive linemen they've had in their history. They took talent and they made them better because that is the key here is you have to get talent. Having talent's not enough. It's what you do with the talent, but finding talent is hard because see, here's the thing. I want you to think about this for a second. As we get ready and say, Dak sucks, just get rid of him. We've got half of the Cowboys people that say, no, he's good. We just need to know, know how to do it, use him better. The other half, he just sucks. We'll just get another guy. It's real easy. And this goes to where fantasy football has screwed your minds that you think fantasy football is real football. It's a fantasy. It means it's not real. It's imaginary. It's a dream scenario because – Unlike fantasy football, where you can just say, I'm going to trade this quarterback for somebody else and plug him in, and instantly their numbers are going to be the same. It doesn't work that way in real life. It doesn't work that way. Sometimes players are predicated on the people around them or the coaching and the system that they're in and so on. And you could take a guy like, a guy like um, God, let's see. Uh, geez, I'm having brain farts today. Uh, I might need to get some Prevagen or something like that. Um, damn, our number two, Alvin Harper, you take Alvin Harper. You looked at Alvin Harper going across the middle. Pfft, you're like, man, that guy's a great receiver. He needs to stop being the understudy of Michael Irvin. And he got his chance with Tampa Bay. And when he had to become the number one guy, he was stealing money. And then the commanders took him and found out, yeah, he, he needs to have all those things around him. He was a product of having the Cowboys with a great offensive line, a record-setting running back, a great quarterback, and a great number one and a great tight end. He had all those things around him, so nobody really had to fo could focus on stopping him. When he was the only one there, then he's exposed. And so finding talent is hard. For example... Do you think that the commanders haven't been trying to find talent at quarterback when they traded for Donovan McNabb? When they took three number ones to move up for RG3? When they had Kirk Cousins and franchise tagman said, we need more talent? And they signed Alex Smith, who was a number one pick? Or after Alex Smith got hurt, that they ended up going through the Colt McCoys and all the different names and everything else to eyebrows or taking another number one and drafting Dwayne Haskins or even trying father time Ryan Fitzpatrick with Fitz magic who had no magic. He was out in the first half of his first game with them and now about to spend, I want to say in the last 12 years, their fifth number one pick on a quarterback, their fifth number one, quarterback pick and the Cowboys got lucky to find one that has a lot of talent in the fourth round and we think we can just get somebody else that's just one team that's been trying to get a quarterback for the last 12 years well actually since the 90s you can look at Cleveland who's spending right now 63 million dollar cap hit not just this year not just this year on Deshaun Watson, but a fully guaranteed 63 this year, next year, and the year after. Be that as it may. The scenarios have been all over the place. We've heard, you know, you know, Cowboys are fielding calls from New England. That's where 
I heard from Dan Cilio. We've heard the idea of Dak Prescott waving a no trade clause, which I would say, why would Dak leave the Dallas Cowboys in the situation he has right now to go to a lesser team that's going to have to give up draft compensation that's in a bad situation when I could just wait till the end of the year? That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Not unless Kansas City is saying, hey, we are, or the Rams. Those would be situations that I, I, if I were Dak, I would consider, okay, yeah, I'll go there. Yeah, you can trade me there right now. No problem. But to go to New England wouldn't make any sense. The funny thing is, and this is actually comical because, you know, uh, the gates of hell have been opened for me. I want you to think back four years ago. This was a conversation on 105 The Fan. And be traded for two first round picks under the franchise tag. What, what realistic discussions do you think the Cowboys are having over that possibility? Is it less than 1% that they would even think about trading him? Hmm. My angle on this, Sean, is which team wants to give you two first round picks and give him $40 million? Don't forget about GM and head coach job security. If you think you have a quarterback for the next 10 years, you're happy to pay him $35 million, and you're fine with giving up two first-round picks. Rolling the dice on Tua T. Rolling the dice okay. on Herbert yeah. is still a 50% gamble. And, you know, you have your Indianapolis's out there. You have the Raiders with two first-round picks. You have the, the Dolphins with two first-round picks. If they like Dak Prescott a lot more than Tua T or Herbert, then – then I would do it. I think the Cowboys view Dak Prescott as an elite person. Yeah. And, and a good player. Yes. And, and I think they're going to end up paying him extremely well for both of those traits. But I must say, if, if you want to give me two, if you want to give me a premium number one or two premium number ones and, and let me go try it again with another quarterback, that, because I think Dak is an elite person but not an elite player, if I'm the Cowboys, I'm very interested in that. And in that time since then, Dak Prescott's got 96 TDs, 34 interceptions. And, is he crazy? Uh, really? Um, is been an MVP finalist two of the last three seasons. So there you have it right there. I don't know what happens. And in the end, here's what I can tell you about Dak Prescott will be is Dak Prescott will be ready to play the season, and Dak Prescott will be out there. He is one of those people who thrive on, let me prove it to you how good I am. Because every time in his career, he has been a guy who, mm, okay, he's not who we really want. He's the guy we got. And he forces your hand to say, we have to keep that guy. I'm not sure that the Joneses ever really have bought into and wanting to keep Dak, it's been their hand has been forced because you you just don't have a better option. And so we'll finish this off this morning with ESPN. Now I'm going to ask somebody else and maybe, maybe it's because of me, I'm kind of old school, but does anybody else see a conflict of interest of ESPN now being a gambling site? Aren't they in a position to influence how people gamble by the way they report? Uh, just just put it out there. This is where, you know, you wonder about the integrity of the game now that gambling is part of it. But that's just me. The end. Damian Woody is here today, so that means it's time for another edition of Would You Believe? Damian, would you believe, would you believe? that the Houston Texans are the biggest threat to the Chiefs in the AFC? I would not believe. I Listen, I love the moves that the Houston Texans have made on both sides of the ball, but they are also playing a first-place schedule this year, and you know who's on who they have? At Cowboys, at Packers, at Chiefs, at Jets, Ravens, Bills, Dolphins, Lions. That is a hell of a schedule for the Houston, for the Houston Texans. They could be better but take a step back as far as their record this year. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, how about this one? Would you believe that the Packers are the biggest threat to the 49ers in the NFC? Mm -hmm. I would not believe that. Listen, the Packers are going to be a trendy pick for a lot of reasons. They got a really good quarterback, a lot of really good young players. But I'm still a believer in what Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions are doing. Um, I, I like the moves that they made. They added on the defensive side of the football. Um, their mentality, I think it's going to be a dog fight, but I, I, I like, really like 
the Detroit Lions. All right, I'm over for two. Here's one more. Damian, would you believe that this is Dak Prescott's last season with the Cowboys? You know, I would believe this. Ooh. One. I, I would. Listen to you. The, 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 the Dallas Cowboys are basically saying, like, pulling a Joe Flacco type scenario here with, with, with Dak Prescott. Mm -hmm. Bet on yourself. Go out here and basically repeat what you did last year, what was a MVP type season for Dak Prescott. If they, they, you would have thought that the Dallas Cowboys and, and Dak would have came to a contract extension before free agency start. That you hasn't happened yet. So I, we're in wait and see mode with this whole scenario. I'll tell you who else thinks this is a situation to watch is Adam Schefter. Uh, earlier this week on NFL Live, uh, he was talking about the Cowboys situation, the fact that Dak is not signed yet, and uh, here's what he had to say. What are they going to do at quarterback if they lose Dak? That's interesting. And that's why I think the Dallas Cowboys might just be a sleeper team in the quarterback market. I love this draft stuff. Because at some point in time, they might have to draft a quarterback higher than you'd think because Dak is going into the last year of the contract, and it might be time to get somebody in there to start grooming him. Just like they found Dak Prescott in round four, might be time to go find another quarterback in another round to begin to get him ready. You're nodding your head. You like this idea? I think it's it's absolutely plausible. Like, if you're the Dallas Cowboys, you have to protect yourself. We, you know that Dak Prescott cannot be franchised. If Dak, it takes two sides to go ahead and come yeah. together for a contract. If Dak Prescott says, look, I want to test free agency, there's nothing the Dallas Cowboys can do to stop Dak Prescott from testing free agency. So, listen, I think the Dallas Cowboys is a situation where it may not be the first round because I think they got some other needs, but I could see them, you know, second, third round pick. Maybe they go out and draft the quarterback because who else do they have? They got who else do they have? They traded a fourth round. They got Trey Lance. They got Trey Lance, who they traded a fourth round pick yeah. for. But other than that, who do the Dallas Cowboys have? But here's the interesting thing, Bishop Woody: the Cowboys are in this situation because of the Cowboys because they have allowed Dak to get to this point yeah. where he has all mm -hmm. the leverage. And so uh, if Schefter's saying it, clearly we're listening, right? But I yeah, think of course if, we if are, because we're idiots. Know, if, they, if the Cowboys don't think that Dak is the guy, then yes, draft a quarterback. If the Cowboys think Dak at this point is going to say, oh, yeah, I want to hit that open market. I want to see, see what my value is to other teams, then yes. But the Cowboys put themselves in this situation, which is why I think a lot of us are scratching our heads like we didn't expect that we would still be talking about Dak not having this extension wrapped up already. So that tells me that something's not right and the, the belief in Dak it might just be the issue. Harry, you got to help me out, oh, right? Don't you worry, I'm about to help you. Bro. I mean, like, there's no way the Cowboys <laughs> are drafting a quarterback this year, right? In the first three rounds, too many team needs. You need, you lost two offensive linemen, Tyler Biotis, who went to the Washington Commanders, also Tyron Smith, who's now with the New York Jets, who's playing running back, right? And I also yeah. there you go. Offense has to have a balanced attack. It just can't be at the forefront of Dak Prescott. You have to be balanced offensively if you think you have an opportunity to contend and win a Super Bowl. Uh, I, I just. Defensive tackle, more linebackers, all these things are needs for the Dallas Cowboys. So drafting an immediate quarterback right now in the first three rounds, I don't see how that's going to make you successful if you Dallas with so many team needs and also not being active in free agency right. in the 2024 free agency tracker. Uh, I also think they already got their quarterback that they're trying to draft and Trey Lance right now. Right. The man will be 24 years old next month. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget, y'all, he was the third overall pick yeah. In a draft. Yeah. A third yeah. Yeah. Well, and the, the San Francisco 49ers gave up on. The but, draft position doesn't. I don't think the draft position really matters because we've seen other guys get drafted high and not pan out. I do think, though, that to your point, Harry, Trey Lance's story, mm -hmm. forget it's it's not finished. It hasn't even begun to be. Hasn't it hasn't even begun. No one's written it yet. So you do have potential <clears> there. <throat> but if you're the Cowboys, the all-in Cowboys, are you are are you prepared to say you know what we're going to hand this over to Trey Lance, sight unseen essentially? I mean you watch right. him in practice, but he hasn't been. Hopefully, well, you'll be ba you'll basically be doing the same thing if you take a rookie quarterback. Yeah. We're just handing it over to the rook to a rookie guy. And by and, the way, at least Trey Lance, you've had that guy in your building for two years. He had mm -hmm. opportunity to sit last year behind Dak Prescott. He's going to sit here, there. Here's, as well. here's, here's my here's my here's my thinking on this. Okay, if if, if 
We, the Dallas Cowboys and, and Dak Prescott has allowed this thing to get to this point right here. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's a there's a there's a real possibility that Dak Prescott could become a free agent. Could become a free agent. Mm -hmm. What if Dallas is like, listen, this is the ceiling that Dak Prescott it can it can hit. Maybe we want to hit a res. Maybe we want to hit a, a re if we can not I mean, resign Dak Prescott. Maybe we want to hit yep. a reset. Build under a rookie a, a rookie quarterback because you still got to. You're right. Maybe it's the ceiling. 36 TDs, nine interceptions, uh, MVP, finalist, best quarterback combination in the NFL this season. And, you know, it's not a big reach to say that how much more can you do? I don't have the answers here, good people, but you know how it is when you are in Cowboys land, there's always some drama. We can't just do what other teams do, which is just get deals done. Try and make your team better stop with owners having their own shows and being the forefront and putting the coaching second